Alright, so we've carved our wax, and with the pokey tool we've done a whole bunch of detail work to give more of a softened feature. It gives you a bit of a sense of topography. Um, it's a little trickier because once you do that, uh, trying to understand where your shadows are supposed to be relative to where uh, your surfaces are gets harder. So you have to start playing with the light to see how that works. And because the wax is reflective, um, that can be tricky. So I'll poke around on this uh, forever, uh, but you can you can stop whenever you're ready. Um, art is done when you're when you're done. Uh, and you can always pick it up and work on it more if you want uh, later. So don't feel like you have to finish every piece in the beginning, especially when you're doing a test uh, profile piece. But what I am going to do is I'm going to carve this circle out so that it's no longer held onto this brick. And um, we're at the point where I don't think I'm going to need these pieces. These extra flanges are great for holding on to stuff. Um, but once you get the surface texture the way you want it. Uh, you can then decide to file the thickness down or hollow out the back depending on what you're trying to accomplish. If you want more of a volume you can hollow out the back more deeply. If you want this just to be like a thin little thing you can drop on a pendant or a signet ring, you would just spend a lot of time just filing this material down to, you know, a reasonable thickness. So I'm going to switch to time lapse and we'll just carve the perimeter. But um, let's go through that one more time. It's really just using the raking tool, right? The, the pokey side of the poking tool to rake this perimeter over and over to a point where we can get it to snap. And then when it's at that snap point, I'll switch back to the normal camera view to show you the color indications and what that looks like uh, so you can really see what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so we're going to break from the timeline of continuity to show you what we expect to be looking for during the time lapse and what you're trying to chase your carving down to. So then when you go through the time lapse, you know what you're looking for. So right now, you know, as we're shaving down our material all around the perimeter, we're getting closer and closer to the edge. And one thing you need to realize is as you look at the light transmitting through this wax, you can see that it's relatively opaque. Um, it just looks blue, but over here you can see a little bit of color transfer. So when you get close to the edge of finishing your carving, what you want to be looking for is actually the light transmittance. So as the remaining time lapse goes through, what you want to see is as I'm carving with this tool, I'm looking at how light this wax coloration is, and then I'm pausing to hold it up to the light so you can see the perimeter that we're looking for the actual carving as we go around. So what I'm trying to make sure is one, that uh, it's matching the shape that I want. So if I'm trying to do a moon, it's very easy to track that contour and say, oh, it's round. But if you have some sort of jagged contour that you want to match, we're looking for this clear, almost transparent line. And just to clarify, like you can actually see when we flip it around, my tool head, right? You can see my tool head from the background. You can see a slight indication of the color of whatever is in the background. And so that's one of those things that you check for where you say, okay, well, I have an object and I can just take whatever it is, but I can see through it. And then you know that you're close to stopping and you can move to the next region that you're shaving down.
Okay, so we're done carving. We've gotten it down as far as we need. We've got that optical transmission. You can see the light passing through and it's almost completely transparent on that perimeter. And so at this point, um, the question is always, uh, can I just break it off? And the answer is yes. Uh, if you want to use your pokey tool and you know go around the perimeter and just stab on a sacri sacrificial piece of material so you're not stabbing into your lap or your desk or whatever you need, um, feel free to do that if you're more comfortable. But usually when I'm looking for whether or not I can break it off, I check to see if um, when I'm bending it, if it actually has some flex, okay? It's called deflectional loading, where when you bend it, it'll actually hold its position. So now we can see that we're no longer in plane and that the fracture plane wants to follow our cut. Okay, and this is basic principles of cutting where you're, you're trying to establish a fracture plane so that the break follows everything you want. And that applies to cutting glass, cutting wax, cutting steel. They all have the same effect. So I always break away. Like, I know it makes sense when you're looking at your part, you care about the detail bit. But in all honesty, if you break away, anything that you don't want is going to happen on the back side. So rarely does your wax stay this thick, right? You're going to shave it down or you're going to change the volume or you're going to hollow out the back. So I know it's immaculate, but that's the part we care about the least. So I'll just bend it like so. And just to give you a sense of how much bend we have here, we're going to do the side view as well. Okay, so we can go fairly far. And then at this point, you can see on the wax, this is that fracture plane, right? So it's breaking just like glass would, where it gives you an index of like, I want to go from here to here. And it may want to break in a straight line, and that's okay. Because um, the rest of the stuff is going to pop off pretty quick. But I just want to show you what that looks like. So now we can actually see our piece is detached, and it just breaks away. And then when you continue carving, you can just chase that back with your carving tool fairly easily. And at that point, you can then approach the side flank with either um, a file or your, your carving tool and just scrape it smooth. Or file it smooth. So we'll do the rest, but um, I think that's enough for the basic carving techniques that we need to cover.